Just do when you're ready, Charles. Just... Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to our regular council session of uh, Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. I want to welcome our staff, council, uh, folks who are visiting the gallery, presenters, and uh, media. I'll call the meeting to order. We acknowledge that we're in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Um, Shall you call the roll, please? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Okay. Mayor Scott? Present. Deputy Mayor Gilroy. Present. Councillor Gould. Present. Councillor Hotelling. Councillor Redmond. Present. Councillor McCormick. Present. Councillor po Joseph. Present. Councillor Porter. Present. And Councillor Goodwin. Present. Thank you, Shelly. <clears throat> Excuse me, that brings us down to... Uh, Administrative procedural issues, 2.1, approval agenda. So everyone would have a copy of the agenda and ask for a motion to approve the agenda presented, please. Moved by Councillor Otelling, second by Councillor Gould. All those in favor say aye. Aren't you mind it nay? Motion is carried. 2.2, uh, approval of the minutes. So there's a recommended motion. The minutes of October 25th, 2023, regular council meeting be approved. Um, so mind I'd ask for a motion to approve, please. Moved by Councillor McCormick, second by Councillor Porter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aren't you mind it nay? Motion is carried. 2.3, business arising. Mr. Harris. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, business arising from uh, the uh, council meetings, recent council meetings, is at page uh, 8, 9, and 10 of council's package. And as always, it's uh, organized into a, a couple of sections, one arising from the most recent meeting or meetings, and, and another that kind of tracks some of the ongoing issues. Uh, and page 8, um, all 10 items are, are complete. So, um, it, Preparing and posting an RFP for uh, uh, sale of surplus properties. Uh, there are a number of them there. Um, uh, the approval of Samantha Stewart as a building official for the municipality. The uh, application to alter a heritage property at the Abbott United Church. Another RFP for the sale of surplus property. Uh, notification of the results of the mayor deputy mayor election. Important topic uh, that's uh, complete. Uh, advertising the approval of a, a uh, amendment to Schedule A land use bylaw for uh, Scallion Powell development that is complete, and uh, registering the municipality with the Burton Nova Scotia to opt in to uh, enhance producer responsibility, otherwise known as CPR, and proceed to provide the required information. I know that that uh, registration is complete, and I know that as late as today, some of the get information gathering was ongoing. Page nine, um, discussions about uh, extended producer responsibility with the town of Amherst, and that's ongoing. Advising the uh, Mattinson Henford Cemetery representatives that their application has been approved uh, with regard to heritage status. Uh, advertising uh, for a public hearing regarding the deregistration, potential deregistration. 40 Chapel Street in Spring Hill's Municipal Heritage Site, and that's the Catholic Church in Spring Hill. The advertising is complete. And uh, advising the problem of Nova Scotia that uh, the municipality supports pass, uh, the passing of 340, and that is complete. A pause there and see if there's any questions on those items before I move on to the rest of the list. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments from Mr. Herrick regarding this report? Seeing none, carry on. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a, a handful of ongoing issues, uh, public hearing regarding rezoning in uh, Little River, um, ongoing Miller Waste uh, Roots discussion has been added to the November Committee of the Whole discussion, and, and that has uh, now been completed. I think we can mark that as complete. She just made the solution is ongoing, and that's with me. I, I really just need to find the time to get that done. Um, technical equipment for hybrid meetings and I think we finally have some good news that the equipment is uh, with the, the folks who are going to install it. And we're looking at an early January installation and we should be um, uh, ready to ready to rumble finally. Uh, public highway signage bylaw. Uh, you know, I, I kind of drop my eyes whenever I read that because I have to tell you that it's still on the desk 
Minister of Public Works. I know that we've made inquiries and we're hoping to get that resolved. We've kind of upped that conversation a little bit. So um, hopefully uh, we can get that resolved soon. Uh, there continues to be issues with the title um, and search on 22 Drummond um, and sale of surplus properties. Uh, 12. Sorry, I got them mixed up. There continue to be uh, title issues um, and um, PID issues with 12 Clark, but uh, 22 Drummond is posted. So, Your Worship, those are the both those properties being in Spring Hill. Those are the ongoing items. and happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any questions from Mr. Herrick regards to his report? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you. Today we have with us uh, Mr. Don McCormick, who's the principal of the Cumberland Campus uh, Nova Scotia Community College. If you come forward, sir, for your presentation. And while Mr. McCormick's coming forward, I'll, I will say that we also have a way of, of Zoom. Um, Mr. Mark DeCamp, who's with Department of Natural Resources and Renewables, who's online with us, and Dr. Wayne Grisosko, who is uh, with us as well, and I believe Steve Ferguson is with us as well. Well said. Thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Yeah, floor is sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Your Worship, Council. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, we're, uh, I wanted to just give you a little context, a little background of, of uh, why we're here and, and, and the purpose. And then, then we'll, we'll go through some very quick slides and, and uh, there's an ask at the end. Um, uh, one of the things that has happened over the last number of years with, with the worship and uh, Minister Rushton uh, have, have created a, a geothermal advisory committee, which uh, some of the councillors here today are a part of. Um, and, and during that, uh, there's conversations about how we can maximize and leverage our, the, the geothermal that is existing in Spring Hill and, and turn it into something um, uh, that, that can benefit the entire community and, and not just obviously the community college, but the entire community. So one of the things that has come up and, and, and sadly, uh, Minister Rushton has told us that um, uh, Cumberland County is, is now uh, the number one in child poverty uh, for the province of Nova Scotia. And that's not, that's not a good thing. Um, um, and and uh, but prior to this, Cape Breton had that uh, had that uh, title. Uh, so in, in an effort, what, what can we do? What can geothermal do in order to do that? We've talked about the opportunity of, of creating a greenhouse and a greenhouse that would be built in order to provide food security for Cumberland County, Cumberland County students or Cumberland County. So the idea behind this is it, can it be done? Could it be done? As all of all of us know, the Civic Center, the rink, 90% of the heat that's produced there goes back into the mine. And that's a lost lead for everybody. That's wasted energy that could be used. So is there something that could be done in terms of a um, uh, of a greenhouse that could benefit that, that we could use that, and we could maximize and leverage the uh, the mines that are underneath there in order to create something that we could really, that could benefit the entire community and the entire county. Uh, so... That, that's kind of the background to that. Um, from that geothermal advisory committee, those discussions came up this, in July of, of this year. We brought together uh, uh, His Worship, uh, uh, Minister Rushton, and, and my boss, president of NSCC, Don Bureau. And we sat down and had a conversation about what we could do and what, what is possible and how can we go forward and is there an opportunity to do this? As, as uh, His Worship has told us a number of times, we have like at least nine different studies on geothermal. No more studies, no more studies. We know it's there. We know the value. We know it can be done. So how can we turn that into something very positive? And that's what brings us here today. Uh, th this is a, an opportunity where we're looking at a, a, a partnership and the partnership exists between the Department of Natural Resources and Renewables between the, the municipal, hopefully the municipality of Cumberland and NSCC. And what we're gonna do is look at the opportunity and the feasibility to build a structure that would be a greenhouse with the intent that that greenhouse would produce uh, vegetables, food for Cumberland County, whether that's for the high schools, the elementary schools, the students, or the entire county to, to support food security within this area. So uh, uh, so that that that's kind of the background, Your Worship. I don't think there's anything I've missed in there, is there? No, it's great. I, I think uh, you know emphasizing the three-way partnership is really important, uh, Don. And I, I really appreciate your uh, yes, and I'll find your presentation. If you would please. Yeah, thank you. Great. 
So if we, if we could move to the first slide. So on the screen, the colleagues that were introduced before, uh, Mark Camp works for the uh, Department of Natural Resources and Renewables, and he's been part of the Geothermal Advisory Committee. Uh, Dr. Wayne Gosko works for the Applied Research at NSCC. And uh, these, these gentlemen have, have been working together on this. And over the last two months, uh, we've put together a little package for you here today to talk about this to see if there's an opportunity that council would consider this going forward. So if we could go to the first slide, please. Uh, the next slide, if we could, the geothermal opportunity. So this this is this is our, our research team. Um, and there are a number of people in NSCC that are a part of this. And what the, this is what they do. They, they solve practical problems and advance sustainable energy products and services in partnerships with industry and communities and will provide learning opportunities for students and faculty. So that's what the applied research team does. And they, they're working in this case uh, with the Department of Natural Resources and Renewables. And part of those is one of the employees that uh, Trevor Kelly, uh, along with Mark Camp and, and Anna McDonald are part of that. So the geothermal opportunity in this valley of Cumberland, home of Spring Hill Mines, former coal mines with large warm water resources, we all know that, represents a large uh, currently underutilized renewable resource and the municipality and the province want to further develop this and look at opportunities. Certainly, uh, in this case, it to support Cumberland County. But we all know if we can create something that will work, we'll hope this will draw industry into, into Spring Hill in the area. And other uh, industry opportunities will look at this and say, oh, wow, this is what they've done here. Imagine what we could do as a business in order to bring industry into Spring Hill area. So as you, there's been nine, nine studies that have supported geothermal and the energy uh, industrial users in Spring Hill have been effectively using these warm mine waters since 1989. And we, we would know those, those companies threat batteries and rope uh, in Spring Hill. There's a large potential to extract more heat from these former mines, which everybody in this, in this room is available, uh, understands. So the pilot project is a pilot project for food security. And, and the idea is, is to do something. There's no revenue generating here. This is not a financial opportunity. This is not a, 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 pro, a, a made for profit. This is something where we're doing in order to support uh, Cumberland County and food security within Cumberland County, which is a growing need uh, and which we're all very aware of. Um, we're looking also looking at this. If we can create this, there would be future expanded district energy system for community and industry partnerships and connections to expand on utilization of this resort and development of talent, training, and innovation in a geothermal energy. And of course, one of the things we have, all of you probably know, our faculty Darren Embry, who who teaches when the in the uh, geothermal uh, uh, program at NSCC. So there's an opportunity for us there to have have that expertise on hand. So the three partners, the municipality of Cumberland, Province of Nova Scotia, and Nova Scotia Community College, which we're really excited about to have to have all of these partners that are working together and and uh, and, and bringing all those minds together. This this really is a great opportunity, something that we haven't seen before. The idea here is what we want to do is investigate the potential benefits and required investments for a geothermal heated greenhouse in Spring Hill. <laughs> So uh, it will it will include in community engagement and student engagement if if we get this and what what we're doing now we've asked each one of the partners uh, to commit to forty thousand dollars over a twelve month period and that one hundred twenty thousand dollars will help us investigate those things and hopefully we'll have something that we we can bring back and always also include funding opportunities as you know uh, within. Every month now, there's more opportunities for federal funding that can support uh, different uh, programs like this. And we're using uh, Department of Natural Resources and Renewables market camps all over that. Uh, you sent me a URL address just last week. There's a new one opening up on November 20th, two days ago. That's open for six months that we may qualify for. And so this is just part of those things that are ongoing uh, because this is uh, also going to help us. Uh, it's going to help improve carbon, our carbon footprints. That's our kind of our, our presentations. If I have a minute, Your Worship, maybe I could just flip it to uh, uh, to to uh, to Wayne and then to Mark uh, for a few comments to bring forward sure. to council. They wanted to be here today, but uh, weren't able to be here. But we're anxious to be here uh, via Zoom. So, uh, Wayne, uh, do you have any comments that you'd like to make to add to that? Uh, certainly. Um, first, to check, uh, can you hear me all right? Muted. No, we can't hear you yet. Can't hear you, Wayne. Okay, one sec. Uh, 
I can hear you, Wayne. Mark, oh. not getting Mark either. So it's yeah. So Mark, uh, so folks, some folks can hear me, but uh, you can't hear me in the room so uh, of the council room. chambers. She is. So where our sounds on you there, Shelley, and the she over way over on the right there by the time. There. Can you hear now? Right now. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me now? Hi, right, Wayne. Can you hear me now? In in council chambers. Can you hear me now? Oh. Uh, sorry, everyone online can hear me, but I, I uh, it seems like I can't be heard in council chambers. Here, um, are you able to send a chat? I could send a note in the chat. Yeah, I'll, I'll send a note in chat. Not gonna work. If I could, just while while Shelly's trying to help us there, we um, there's been a lot of, as Don mentioned, a lot of a lot of research in regards to geothermal. Uh, it went through a lot of times where there was some interest, other times where there wasn't any interest. Um, the municipality, whether it was the Spring Hill Town of Spring Hill at the time or Um, Mark, now yep. I'm not hearing anything from, now I'm not hearing anything from council. Are you? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I think they're trying to sort out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don did a great job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think Don, Don, you've covered yeah. it. So. And uh, nice to meet you, Wayne. Nice to meet you. I work with the municipality of Cumberland and, uh, and sort of the contact person for a lot of these things for the municipality. Good to meet you, Steve. Have, have you been involved in the, the green uh, idea? Uh, not to any great extent, no. Um, I am sort of the contact person for our uh, geothermal yeah. research advisory committee and I work with Mark to set up our meetings and the agendas and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, harass Steve. him about things and ask him a lot of dumb questions, but uh, I wasn't particularly involved in this greenhouse proposal. No. Steve is like uh, very helpful for us. Yeah, yeah. Like he, yeah. So it's nice to see there's a hundred thousand dollars in the budget to actually have uh, the right hardware or and software for uh, hybrid meetings come January. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, that item. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that may help. I'll I'll just wait until uh, we know if we if the sound will work in there. It's interesting. We could hear everything going on. It's the it's the incoming sound that seemed to be an issue. Yeah. And uh, apparently uh, they can hear us now in the council chamber, but we can't hear them. project that if we do move forward is going to be a very, very positive and groundbreaking thing and a model for technically everybody within Nova Scotia and across Canada. And I think personally, and I only speak personally, uh, if we miss up on this. Thank you. 
We can't hear them now. Really? Is that? Heard yeah, Just we'll uh, we'll have to uh, unfortunately we'll have to. Uh, we can hear you now. Can you hear us? We can hear now, yeah. We can hear you, uh, but faintly now, yes. Okay. okay, so Mark, go ahead if you if you would, please. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, Don uh, did a great job of explaining uh, some of the work. Uh, we we hope to build on like the achievements that uh, uh, have already been done over the last 30, 40 years. Like, it, it's incredible. And uh, uh, the, the industry, geothermal industry itself is just accelerating so quickly. And um, it, it's just growing so fast. This is uh, the perfect time for us to just to try again and and see if we could uh, really make some projects uh, viable and uh, to do a good job. So we're just happy to 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 work with all the partners, and we hope to contribute in a meaningful way. So thank you for um, hearing us out. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Dr. Roscoe, do you have comments, please? Yeah, just briefly. So, and I think um, both both Don and Mark have covered it really well. The fantastic opportunity here, which is well known with the geothermal, I will just add um, on the community greenhouse aspect that um, the photo in the presentation that had a community greenhouse is the relatively new community greenhouse in Potlatek First Nation, which is having a tremendous uh, positive uh, impact there uh, in terms of community and. That's a that's a relatively small greenhouse, and it is geothermally heated in an area where geothermal is reasonable, but but uh, you have an even greater advantage in terms of uh, warm geothermal water uh, as an energy source there in Spring Hill um, in in Cumberland County. Um, so um, you know the potential for something like that to have uh, really great benefits is is high. Plus, we can we can learn on the community um, greenhouse angle. From uh, folks who have who have already started doing that, so um, uh, I think I think it's just uh, it's a great it's a great step all around. So thank you for uh, for hearing us out about it. Thank you, sir. Steve, did you uh, have any comments? Uh, only to say it's a great project uh, with the uh, the geothermal coordinator position that was created and filled uh, about nine months ago now, eight months ago. We've made tremendous progress, and this is, you know, I guess evidence of the fact it's already beginning to bear fruit. So uh, exciting times indeed. Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, unless there are any questions or comments from councillors, um, I just want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, Mr. McCormick, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, count, this, council will take this under advisement, obviously, with, with the decision at a future meeting, but it's really important to our communities, and I think it ticks all the boxes, as I said earlier. So half council I want to thank all you folks for being here I want to thank you for all the work you've done to this point and I want to thank uh, obviously uh, President Bureau who uh, who attended you know a couple of meetings with us to talk about this and, and to see his his interest as well in Cumberland County is important to us so again on behalf of council thank you very much appreciate it You're welcome thank, you. thank, thank you. you thanks thanks folks see ya hmm? see ya Thank you. So that brings us down to uh, strategic priority issues. We don't. We do not have any today. Number four, major organizational items. There are none as well. And five is organizational policy bylaw items. So 5.1 is reading reading of rezoning PID 25477431, Oak Group Incorporated, 331 Highway 2, New Prospect. Mr. Boone. Good afternoon, Your Worship. Sure. Thank you. Um, the information is in your package. 
with regards to the zoning application. Um, this application was received actually back in the summer, and we've been having some conversations back and forth with the owner and the developer. Um, project's relatively straightforward in that um, there's an existing warehouse on the property. Uh, the owner wants to develop it into self-storage, and part of the um, the kind of project is to utilize also shipping containers as part of the uh, self-storage behind the existing warehouse. Uh, we see that as, as being reasonable in the request uh, for the rezoning for a couple of reasons. The existing warehouse is underutilized. It's in very good condition. Um, the utilization of shipping containers can be seen as a reuse of items. So it's a, an opportunity, I think, from somewhat of an environmental and recycling point of view as well. Uh, millions of these containers come to um, North America every year and are never reutilized. So I think that's a that's a positive opportunity. In order for uh, containers to be utilized in any um, self-storage or any storage warehousing, they have to be in an appropriate zone. So in this case, the rural resource zone would not permit the use of shipping containers. They would be limited in how much time they could be on site. The proponent is looking at putting uh, the shipping containers on more permanent uh, slab locations. So in order to do that, obviously, they wouldn't want to have to move them after a short period of time. So the move to the um, the rural industrial or the IR zone uh, would permit uh, under policy the use of the shipping okay. containers. This is also going to mean a reconfiguration and reuse of the existing warehouse. So uh, your worship, it meets policy. We have reviewed it. Uh, the neighborhood is a mix as per the report of different uses, but it includes some other business and industrial type uses in the neighborhood. Um, so I think in keeping kind of with the character of the neighborhood, it's a reasonable approach, meets policy. Uh, so unless there's any specific uh, questions or uh, clarification required, Your Worship, I think the report stands uh, before you. Thank you, sir. So the uh, there's a recommended motion that council approve first reading of amendment to schedule A of the land use bylaw and to schedule a public hearing for the proposed amendment at a future council meeting for the following rezoning. Hit 254-77431 from rural resource to rural industrial. So I'd like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councilor Gil Goodwin. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Gilroy. Any questions or comments for uh, for Mr. Boone? Councilor uh, Redmond, please. These uh, containers cannot be used on uh, uh, home properties as it stands now in our bylaw. Yeah, you worship back to uh, Councilor Redmond. There are limitations uh, where shipping containers can be utilized, uh, and in the zones that they are permitted, they uh, normally have a restriction on timeline. So they're meant to be temporary. People are doing renovations for a home, need to keep supplies or move furniture out. Um, but for the most part, they're they're not a, a permissible um, utilization for storage. And what would be the reason for not being permissible? Uh, it's been part of, I, I guess it's, sorry, your worship, back to Councillor Redmond. Um, I think it can be something that can be reviewed and looked at as part of the plan review. But in most cases, um, they're just not seen as, as something that's more appropriate in a residential zone. Um, utilization of them, often they can deteriorate if uh, not kept up. And where it's part of the business in this case, we think that they'll, one, be screened from the highway by the existing warehouse. Uh, but in the cases of it being in residential neighborhoods, smaller properties, uh, it's harder to keep the land use separations. It's hard, hard to keep uh, barriers or visual barriers from su such a... Uh, utilization of of the, of the structures. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Redmond. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Boone? Seeing none, call with question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mark your mind that nay. Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 5.2, council meetings and, and proceedings policy. Mr. Herrick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the request for decision is count, uh, begins at page 15 in council's package and the, the the issue is uh, amendments to the council meeting and proceedings policy. This is uh, this is not a new issue. It's been discussed a number of times at Committee of the Whole, most recently in the uh, November Committee of the Whole. And so very briefly, um, the policy hadn't been updated in some time, and we wanted to uh, update it to reflect um, current practice. We had um, current council had um, Altered the schedule of meetings somewhat, and we want to codify that into the uh, into the policy. Because we've done that, and uh, so uh, committee of the whole, as it is now, but at now having it enshrined in policy, council committee of the whole on the third uh, Wednesday of each month at four p.m. Council at four p.m. on the fourth Wednesday of each month 
There's now provision in the uh, uh, policy for uh, suggested policy, I should say, for special meetings on the first, second, or fifth Wednesday of the month. Um, uh, again, usually uh, beginning at 4 p.m. And uh, a little bit of a change is that there would be no regular meetings of either committee, the whole or council in July or August, but that the business would be dealt with on a case by case basis as it arose by special meetings in those months. Uh, really, those are the, the major items, uh, Your Worship. And as I said, we've um, we've discussed it uh, at length on a couple of opportunities at Committee of the Whole. So um, there is a suggested motion in the package that uh, Council uh, approve the draft amended Council Meetings Proceedings Policy. Thank you. So the recommended motion is that the draft amended Council Meetings and Proceedings Policy be approved. If someone would like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councilor Redmond, seconded by Councilor Hotelling. Any questions or comments from Mr. Hare regards this agenda item? Seeing none, we'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aren't your mind at nay? Most is carried. Thank you, sir. 5.3, amendment to Schedule A, the tax reduction and exemption policy. Ms. Hurdle, our Director of Finance, I believe is going to speak to this. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this was discussed last week at the COW, so I'm just going to briefly go remind everybody what it was about. Uh, so we are asking that the uh, tax exemption reduction and exemption policy schedule A be amended to add a couple of properties for the Lions Club of Parsboro. Uh, it was discovered that during the year um, when the assessment came out that the property that they had been added um, just this year. And so we are requesting the amendment back to April 1st, 2023 for those properties to be exempted. Thank you. So uh, the recommended motion is that council approve of the amendments reflecting the addition of accounts 11009107 and 11009093, effective April 1st, 2023, to the tax reduction and exemption, po exemption policy, Schedule A. Someone would like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councillor Goodwin, second by Councillor Joseph. Any questions or comments for Amy in regards to this agenda item? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor say aye. I can't remind it, nay. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Amy. You, Worship. 5.4, four day work week. Mr. McCracken, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer. <clears throat> Thank you, Worship. So, this item has been uh, presented and discussed on um, a couple times at length in two previous meetings, uh, including last week at the regular committee of the whole for November. Uh, the information from that meeting remains the same. So your uh, package includes an, an RFD, some supporting information in a recommended motion. And I'll um, um, happy to answer some questions. Thank you, sir. So the uh, recommended motion is that council approve the compressed four day work week policy. Moved by Council McCormick, seconded by Council Rotelling. Any questions or comments for Mr. McCracken in regards to this agenda item? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Dr. Minot, nay. Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 5.5, .5, truck route bylaw. Mr. Walkrest, Director of Public Works. Thank you, Your Worship. With the capital work barreling to a conclusion on Junction Road, I think now is an appropriate time to bring forward the truck route bylaw that will work to divert through truck traffic away from the downtown core and uh, kind, of, kind of create a, a better path for through truck traffic in the community of Spring Hill. Uh, the Motor Vehicle Act requires truck routes to be established by bylaws of council. And so we've come today with a draft bylaw that was modeled off others in the province uh, to support the establishment of a truck route in the community of Spring Hill. This is mainly intended to control through truck traffic, trucks and equipment that have business in the community, whether to make deliveries or deliver service or the, an owner lives in the community and wants to park there, they can proceed from the truck route to go about their business and return to the route to leave the community. So it's not intended to inhibit that sort of business that goes on, on in the community. It's to direct through traffic and the most appropriate route through the community, not impacting the downtown core, not making corners that aren't as suitable for them as the path we're taking them down. So uh, a draft of the bylaw is in your package, and if uh, council so uh, willing, a uh, first reading is, is requested. But happy to answer any questions uh, council may have, Your Worship. Thank you, sir. So the uh, 
Recommend a motion is that council approve first reading of the truck route bylaw. Moved by Councillor Joseph, second by Councillor McCormick. Any questions or comments for um, Mr. Walkrest in regards to this agenda item? Yeah. Oh, Councillor Goodwin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Your Worship. Justin, um, being semi familiar with Spring Hill, I'm wondering, were there, was there any thought given to uh, that there's no um, sidewalks? in the area where the trucks would be routed through? Because I see a lot of walking traffic up and down this section of roads, some young children, some older folks. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Junction Road, those sections do have um, fairly generous size uh, roadway as well as sidewalks and a uh, little more spots for people to walk safely. Um, I'm just worried about the amount of walking traffic and whether they'll be safe. Thank you, Councilor Goldman. Uh, Mr. Walkrest, Your Worship. Um, having looked at the uh, moving them off of Junction Road specifically from Lisgar Street to Main Street, uh, that, that decision was made to direct traffic away from the downtown core where the streets are narrow, there's on street parking, there's more pedestrian and foot traffic going about business. Um, moving them down Lisgar Street while there isn't uh sidewalks it is a wider street and there is some shoulder available um through the rest of the community i'm kind of running through it in my head as well as, as we, as we yeah. talk about it I, I think there's sidewalk for the bulk of the rest of the route perhaps after the last bit of mcgee street as you get open as well those streets get wider as you get further from the uh, more rural parts of the community okay mr Hare. Yep. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I got a good question. Great question, I think. It doesn't doesn't preclude us from um, considering sidewalks in the future on on uh, Lisker to Junk. Sorry, on Lisker from Junction Road to to Main Street. So it's something we can keep in mind as we draft future current capital, future and current capital plans. So for sure. Yeah. Thanks. For, thanks for the question. Thank you. Any other uh, Councillor Joseph? Please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, looking at the approach from Highway 142 and Highway 2, um, is there going to be sign, signage uh, in advance for these trucks to know that to take Lizard Street and beyond? Mr. Walkrest, your worship. Um, the signage will be posted after uh, after the connector uh, before they have to turn to Lizard Street, um, as well as where they enter the roads that are managed by the municipality can to come into the community of Spring Hill at the former town boundary. There'll be signage there. There'll be signage before the turn is required on Lisgar, but between the connector and Lisgar Street so that they'll have had a good time to do that. So we've reached, we've created a signing diagram of order the signs and, and, and hopes we can get this established as quickly as possible if council chooses to uh, approve the bylaw. Thank you, Worship. And Councillor Goodwin, I was I was going to take that question, but I guess she took it too. So, but so thank you very much. Two two for one. Two for one. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Walkrest? Uh, seeing seeing none, I have a comment and a question. I guess. Um, so one thing that uh, really pushed, uh, I believe, to today's you know uh, request, I think, is you know Main Street in Spring Hill is quite dangerous, and there's a turn below the post office where it's hard for trucks to navigate that bit of a twist in the street without crossing the center of the road and there's parking on both sides. I mean, it's, it's not safe there. And we've been approached many times from, from the community about, about the dangerous situation it is. So, so I, I mean, I, I personally really support and think it's a great idea. I have a question for you though now. So um, there was a, a truck that had problems navigating the street. And when he finally got pulled into a lot, I stopped and asked him why he would use main street versus Lizard street when it's so much clearer and easier to you. And he said that, that that you know he and he talks some of his fellow truckers their gps will take them up junction road and down main street versus lizard street so my question is and i maybe don't know the answer but i'm wondering is um when that becomes a designated truck road and or a non-designated truck road i wonder if that actually leads to other uh, directional uh impacts whether it's gps or whatever like i wonder if those actually show up provincially as being truck route non-truck route and maybe you don't know the answer but i hope it does because um, that's what he he told me that a lot of the trucks are using Main Street because the GPS will take them up. They're not familiar with the community; they follow their GPS right up Main Street. 
in down or Junction Road, sorry, in down Maine. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the problem. But anyway, maybe you can answer that, Justin. But uh, I, I an observation, I guess. Yeah, I don't have an answer for you today, but I'll work with our GIS coordinator, Maggie Pitts, who works with GeoNova and, and the province on some of their mapping. Perhaps that's something that can be Great. updated or sent to the mapping software. But as stated to uh, Councillor Joseph's question, that there will be signage posted right. in, well in advance. So they'll, yep. they'll have that visual notification to make those turns. And while well, it takes some time to get used to, I think as they're in the community more, they'll see those and yep. learn the route. Great. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aren't you mind that nay? Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. 5.6, Elemental Energy Development Agreement. Mr. Boone, Director of Development and Planning. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, elemental energy is for the Higgins Mountain Wind Farm proposal. I know we've talked about this in some of uh, the staff reports. The official application came in for this project back in June, but we have been in uh, discussions with Elemental representing the various property owners for the wind farm project um, since back in April. Um, the requirements under the Municipal Government Act uh, allow us to have adoption of planning documents. And in this case, we have two policies that address large and, and medium and large scale wind farms. Um, and then there's sections that allow us to be very specific on what go in, would go into a development agreement. This is a little different than what council seen in the past with the majority of the applications in my time have been rezonings. This is actually a property that has their zone that uh, permits the use, but there is specific council policy and land use requirements that requires to negotiate a detailed uh, development agreement. Um, in the package, you have uh, the references to the policy, but more specific, if you uh, looked at Schedule B, there's uh, individual sections from the policy are addressed in how we um, have worked with the client uh, and the, um, the specific requests or, or uh, back and forth in the negotiations with respect to each of those particular um, criteria within, within the guidelines. Um, the one thing I would want to note uh, very specifically in the background is this is a very large project, uh, well over 9,000 acres. It's 17 turbines in total, 12 which would be within the municipality. Um, there will be more opportunity for public engagement and public discussion because this is, again, only first reading that's before council. So it will require a full public hearing. Um, as mentioned, the policies have been reviewed in detail. The one key element I'd like council just to be aware of at this early stage is that this is all subject to a provincial uh, environmental assessment, which was approved back in May, on May 4th, actually, by the minister. And yeah. our references within the development agreement are very specific that the elements of the EA uh, are first and foremost, but we also note them in the development agreement, which becomes a legal contract. Um, Elemental Energy working with their uh, partners they're actually bringing forward a community benefit program. That uh, program will be administered yeah. through their community liaison group to start. And the value of that uh, community benefit is $100,000 annually uh, through that program. And that would be uh, utilized within the communities, both in Cumberland and Colchester County. Um, so uh, benefits from this in, in respect to um, Financial is obviously the assessment uh, and the valuation of taxation that would come forward. So uh, two key things in our policy is talked about community and public benefit. So I just thought I'd, I'd note those two main uh, requirements. So unless there's specific uh, questions, Your Worship, it is a large package. Um, unfortunately, um, to follow uh, criteria, we have to put all the descriptions of every property. So that's why the property the package got quite so large. So unless there's specific questions, um, we'll be asking council to consider first reading. Thank you, sir. So the uh, recommended motion is that council approve first reading of the Higgins Mountain Energy Wind Project, Project Development Agreement for PIDs 252 252-674-20, 253-600-41, 250-88725, 250-88733, and we'll schedule a public hearing for the proposed development agreement at a future council meeting. Someone would like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councillor Gould, second by Councillor Porter. Any questions or comments for Mr. Boone in regards to this agenda item? Seeing none, we'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Dr. Mind at nay. 
Motion's carried. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. That brings us down to number six, business issues. Uh, 6.1, appointment of building official, uh, Mr. Boone, Director of Development Planning. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, this is uh, going back to the uh, special meeting we had on November 1st, where we appointed our asked and council endorsed the appointment of Samantha Stewart as a uh, building official. Uh, the report that's before you is to uh, do the same thing with our colleague, uh, Corey DeWitt. Uh, Corey just finished his uh, last training course successfully and has been uh, certified as a residential inspector. So first step um, is to get him appointed as a building official. The the one thing I say, Your Worship, is this is another good news story, just quickly. Um, and I had actually wanted to have um, Corey and Samantha and David, their supervisor here today, but they're actually in a building officials training course in Halifax. So, um, and I, they thought I should ask for maybe council to change their meeting date, but I wasn't going to take that risk. So is that right, Councilor Redmond? So. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, all, all humor aside, it's just it is a good news story, and this is going to give us a lot more uh, flexibility as far as servicing the customer base. So again, Your Worship, the report. If there's any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, sir. So the recommended motion is that Council appoint Corey Dewitt as a building official for the municipality of the County of Cumberland. Some like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councilor Joseph, seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Questions or comments, Councilor Joseph. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a comment. Uh, it's great to see two young individuals uh, within the organization uh, being mentored by senior members and uh, being employed in the field as of today. And I've seen, like yesterday, we just talked about this to allow them. So I want to say congratulations to both members and the staff that helped. Yeah. Your Worship, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, thank Please. you, Councillor Joseph. Um, David Buell has been instrumental in, in making sure that these uh, these uh, colleagues of ours went through the program. So um, I'd like to recognize, <clears throat> excuse me, David for that. Um, I, and again, council to have supported and uh, senior management to support getting that kind of program and moving people through the organization is a, a tremendous boost. And uh, also, I think it it sets uh, a good precedent for uh, for attracting other talent here as well. So thank you. Sure, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aren't you mind at nay? Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. And you can pass along our uh, congratulations to Mr. DeWitt, if you would, uh, sir. And, and I'm sure we all will individually as well. Thank you. Thank you. 6.2, Council Committee Selections. Mr. Herrick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, at last week's committee, the whole meeting, the current uh, schedule or roster or however you want to refer to it, list of Council appointees to uh, various committees was uh, included in the package along with a request to let us know whether um, uh, there was any interest in, in changing committees or what council's interests were. We gather that most, if not all, wish to stay on the present committees. Uh, so um, we're suggesting right. that um, that council approve a motion to uh, give that effect uh, this afternoon. But uh, just a couple of other uh, points to consider. We are at the, this point in time, along with the uh, uh, mayor, deputy mayor, and CAO in Amherst at council's direction, discussing a number of joint committees, including the joint council committee and poverty reduction advisory committee and uh, a couple of tourism committees and the border entrance committee. So we're kind of having those discussions, um, not ready to, to recommend any changes. So we're just suggesting that those stay static at the present time. Um, and I guess the other thing um and I'll probably ask that this be included in the motion. As part of the police review, uh, Mayor Scott and I have had a, a number of conversations now with um, senior at council's direction with senior officials uh, in both the RCMP and the Department of Finance. Um, and did I, say, did I say finance? Justin, I got finance on my mind. I'm staring at a spreadsheet here. So uh, Department of Justice. Uh, and have met with those two organizations at the highest level and begun the work of... Uh, um, responding to the RCMP response to the, R, uh, the RFP for policing. Um, so the number of issues come from that, but one of them that we've happened upon is a, is a model where a municipality uh, uh, has a police advisory board, an RCMP police advisory board, that includes all of the members of council as well as uh, a, a few uh, members of the, the public. And so 
uh, in speaking with the folks who were involved um, in that municipality, uh, we are led to understand, and it makes sense, that it's a great communication tool, keeps council engaged, um, and that all of the issues related to policing, given it's a high profile here in, in our municipality at the current, at present time, everybody is engaged and informed. Uh, and so we'd like to, uh, we'd like to pursue that. And so what I am proposing, uh, your worship, is that the council uh, reappoint all council, underlying mm -hmm. council representatives to, uh, to the current committees and further that uh, the, the CAO be directed to contact the Department of Justice to explore permission to appoint all members of council, the RCMP advisory committee, along with some public members. And so that would ultimately come back to council for final approval, but we'd like to have a look at it because we think it makes uh, makes a lot of sense. So that's a lot of words you worship, but that's the motion. So, so thank you. So uh, having heard the, Mr. Harris suggest a motion, some like them, uh, some like to move that please. Yeah. I can be. He repeat it? <laughs> <laughs> if someone like to make that motion, please. Uh, moved by Councilor McCormick, seconded by Councilor Ribbon. Questions or comments in regards to any of that, the committee appointments and or the, 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 the suggestion around the police advisory, or simply advisory board. Councilor Ribbon. That would eliminate the one that we're on now. Um, it would. So, good question. So, in the Police Act, there are uh, two oversight bodies that are contemplated in Nova Scotia. If there's a municipal police force, there's a police commission. If there's an RCMP uh, service provider, there's a police advisory board. Um, and the makeup of those board boards is uh, also um, prescribed in the in the legislation. I know it's, it's East Hans that we're speaking of, and I know that they've gotten special dispensation for the minister to uh, um, structure the board that way. So a lot of words to say, yes, it would simply restructure the current committee. That's the, that's the working premise, and we just want to investigate it a little bit. And, and still including uh, citizen appointees yeah. as well. Yeah. That's a Allow, requirement of the yeah. 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 Okay. I'm not losing my position on the fencing committee, am I? <laughs> We're on the fence set. We're on the, the fence. fence. <laughs> Any other questions or comments in regards to the to this agenda item? <laughs> Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Contramind it nay. Most is carried. You worship if the member you, could lose her position, she could pick it the next meeting. He maybe. could. Yep. He could pick it up. Oh, 6.3, Sunset Community Inc. Proposed Housing Development, Mr. Perry. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, sorry, just, just one second. Councilor Gilroy? In regards to those committees, yeah. the yes. recent uh, Wellfield Advisory Committees that we just had with the town of Amherst, uh, Councilor Gould and I attended, there is a an outstanding opening for an appointee from the municipality, a citizen from the a municipality of Cumberland that we need to fill and we need to fill it before January if we can. So just thought I'd add that in on that. Yeah, so, so thank you. Uh, I'm going to call you your worship. Yeah, I definitely might. And I thank thank you. Well, there you go. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Perhaps um, just kind of uh, back through that committee, just have uh, perhaps the CAO or the clerk there drop me a note and we can get the, the advertising done. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hare. Okay, back 6 on 6 point 6.3. 6.3, thank you, Your Worship, is Sunset Community, Inc. proposed housing development. And so I think we're all aware uh, Sunset Community, Inc. is in the throes of, uh, of uh, preparing and submitting a, a uh, development for housing in the community. Um, and uh, they've approached, approached the municipality for uh, some support. Um, council has discussed uh, this issue on a on an in camera basis previously, and so this is uh, uh, the discussion and proposed motion on uh, in a public forum. And the motion uh, suggested is that council approve a three hundred thousand dollar contribution to the proposed Sunset Community Housing Project, conditional on the project receiving CMHC approval. That's the major funder or financer, perhaps. Uh, further that should the conditional contribution be made, that it be funded from the operating reserve. That's the motion that we're proposing, Your Worship. Sir. So someone like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councilor Telling, second by Councilor Rebin. Questions, comments in regards to this agenda item? 
Seeing none, uh, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Contramind it nay. The motion is carried. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mr. Hurt. You're welcome. That brings us down to number seven, information items. Uh, this is where council uh, counselors have the opportunity to, to recognize uh, individuals or in organizations, I guess, in the community. And, and uh, so on the agenda, I guess I'm first. So I'm going to take the opportunity today to uh, to recognize the efforts of of the late Dr. Brian Ferguson. Um, he doesn't need any any uh, his name, and nor his record does not need any explanation or introduction to this council nor in this county. We all know that uh, he uh, he was both a professional friend and a personal friend to many many folks throughout Cumberland County. Um, but one thing I always said about Dr. Ferguson, uh, he never refused anyone. You know, whether it was a phone call on, a, on a, at seven thirty on a morning where someone that we met on the street needed help, or it was a Saturday night uh, eleven o'clock call because he had real concerns about health care, particularly here in Cumberland County, what he felt we as individuals and the community should be doing and what the problem should be doing. Uh, he was never shy on how he felt. He was never uh, never held back on what he, his beliefs about a stronger health care system for, for the province and particularly here in Cumberland County. And I can tell you anywhere I traveled uh, throughout this whole municipality, on many occasions, Dr. Ferguson's name was brought up in one way or another, either it helped a family, a person, community, Kids and sports, uh, Mr. Cole, uh, uh, Daryl Cole, our our, uh, our communications guy, uh, you know, has said on many occasions about the great things that Dr. Ferguson did with kids and sports, things that people will never ever know about. And I've witnessed it myself, and I know everyone around in this room tonight have witnessed it yourselves as well. And I just want to say, on behalf of this council and our in our community, uh, our condolences to his family. And uh, I don't think Dr. Ferguson will ever be forgotten. His commitment has has been. Uh, I think solidified in history in this community. So uh, publicly, thank you, Dr. Ferguson, for all you've done. Uh, 7.12, Councilor Ribbon. Um, I initially only just wanted to recognize four, but before I recognize those, I would like to send get well wishes to our fellow um, firemen from Westchester who's a very young fellow that just recently had a stroke, um, sending him all the best and get well wishes. And his fellow fire people were just phenomenal in, in helping get him to the hospital. So, And then in Wentworth, uh, Kevin Sprague has stepped down after 20 years as fire chief. And his father before him served 20 years. Um, so the Sprague's have uh, really gone out of their way for their community uh, for 40 years as chief, not how many years they've got in his service. Uh, Todd Seymour will be the new chief. I wish him very well. And Connor Scallion will be the new deputy chief. And uh, you, as you know, that our volunteer uh, fire personnel are very, very important in Cumberland County. And um, I appreciate every one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Revin. Certainly, on behalf of Council, we we uh, thank uh, Chief Sprague for his commitment and dedication to our community. Thank you very much. Seven point one three, Councilor McCormick. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to recognize Shelby Ryan and Romy Pugot, who are second year CEC students of NSCC. These two students were given an assignment to identify and participate in a community-based activity. Where food security is a huge reality right now, they came up with the idea of a food pantry. So they reached out to the municipality for approval and a place to set up the pantry. Their next step was to have, was to have this pantry built. So they approached the carpentry students at NSCC and they agreed to take on this project. Then they reached out to local businesses for supplies in order to build this pantry. D&J Hardware took no time for considering and agreeing to supply the material and they even delivered it on the same way, same day. They received monetary donations, plus one business has provided monthly non-perishable items. Now the members of our community have stepped up and are filling the pantry sometimes two and three times a day. This pantry is located at the entry of the community gardens and this project has been doing very well. So it is, I'm so wonderful to see the community come together to help each other during these difficult times. So saying thank you to these two young ladies and everyone that was involved in this project. Thank you, Your Worship. 
Thank you, Councilor. Councilor McCormick and uh, certainly a great effort and it's uh, just really appreciated in the community. Thanks to everyone. I'll thank everyone for attending today and I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn by Deputy Mayor Gilroy. We're adjourned. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thanks everyone. Deputy Dowling. Do we really need a, a go in the camera? Let's see the motion though. Let's adjourn. Don't we actually need a second in a, in a, would, would somebody actually be able to pose?